Uh, the time is one minute after four on Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. This is a special meeting of the Redevelopment Commission of Bloomington, Indiana. Um, my name is Deb Hutton and I'm the continuing, for now, Vice Chair of the RDC. Uh, could I have a roll call check-in of Commissioners? Deborah Myerson here. C. Scambellari here. John West here. Deb Hutton here. Staff present. Uh, Christina Finley, Hand Department. Larry Allen Legal. We also have Anna Killian Hansen, the director. Uh, she is present, but she stepped out of the room for the moment. Any other staff online? Heather Lacey, legal department. No others there? That's it. Okay. Um, and I don't have my cheat sheet with me, courtesy of Deborah. Um, so, could we, are there any, uh, this is a special meeting, so no reports. Um, and shall I make a proposal? I move to add the uh, claims report of which date? February second. February second, two thousand twenty-four, to the minutes at, to the to the meeting agenda after our two special events. Uh, Randy, do you want to check in as roll call, please? Randy Cassidy, present. Thanks. Okay. So. There, there was a, thanks. If you're going to run the meeting, typically that motion is made. If we're going to do it by motion, that which is totally fine. Uh, someone else other than the chair of the meeting should make that motion to Sorry. amend the agenda. No, it's okay. I just as a as a point of order. No, please correct us as we go, me as we go along. So if we have a motion to add the claims register, just a little bit of background before we call for that motion, I guess, is just to say that the claims, to, on the record, the claims are going to close this Friday, which kind of proposed an unusual situation where you would be approving the claims register before you approve the claims register on Monday so to meet the controllers deadline of when the checks will go out we just wanted to add this to the agenda to clarify that this is when we're approving it for and that it's the appropriate approval date uh, I don't know if that's because of how we've gotten off on the meeting schedule for the RDC <laughs> mm -hmm. and it wasn't on the last one so uh, if there is a motion on the floor we would we would appreciate that okay move to add the claims for February 2nd 2024 to the agenda for this evening second uh, all, in, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, moving to uh, first point of new business, resolution 2413, lease modification for early termination, GP Strategies Corporation. Uh, does any staff person wish to speak to us? I, I could speak to this. With, so this is an agenda item that we took up at our last okay. meeting and it's been brought here again for the special session. So. Um, as you all know, as part of the purchase of Showers West, the building immediately west, to, uh, west of us here, uh, used for public safety, the bonds were issued uh, based on the public safety local income, not, excuse me, the economic development local income tax, uh, but earmarked specifically for public safety projects uh, were used to purchase that building. The RDC was the purchaser because originally the intent was the RDC would be the owner and the RDC does own it. Uh, but bond proceeds were purchased it. for that uh, in order to um, be able to renovate part of the property uh, we have been executing when appropriate lease terminations uh, with the tenants um, this is one of them uh, with GP strategies GP strategies has found a new location they desire to move there we think it's in the best interest not just of the project as it has been planned, but even the best interest of the property going forward based on the new administration's reevaluation of the project and that ongoing conversation to terminate this lease. The last time that we had a conversation about this particular lease, uh, there was there's questions because the terms of this lease, unlike the others, we're not paying anything affirmatively for the termination of this lease. What this agreement is to terminate this lease is essentially foregoing any future rent obligation and then GP Strategies, unlike some other tenants, had a build-out uh, allowance that they had received tenant improvement allowance at the beginning of their lease. We had paid that as part of closing. We had paid a certain amount as part of closing from the bond proceeds. And so they were paying an additional amount on top of their rent to cover the tenant improvements. They still have a balance on that tenant improvement. And so what we were saying is since we are going to forego the remaining rent, we also forego the extra payment for tenant improvements. Uh, at the time of closing last year in January 31st, 2023, uh, that amount was $92,468. Uh, the amount that remains um, from after uh, they paid for an entire year of rent and the extra payments is $65,405.09. 
And so that is the amount, that's on top of the rent that they were paying, uh, which was, I can happily get that because that was also another question. Um, GP Strategies has about not quite 11,000 square feet in the building. They pay $10.98 per square foot, which comes out to be just under $120,000 a year in rent, so $119,417.40, which does not include that tenant allowance amount that's on top of that. Um, the tenant allowance amount that's on top of that it comes out to about $27,000 annually. So that's why you see the reduction from the 90,000 to, to the 65,000. So what we are asking here is that you approve the lease termination and just, just in terms of the transparency about what would be forgiven is that we would forego the revenue that you all would get in the 444 account of not just the rent, but also that additional amount for the tenant. Okay, what's the length of their lease that they still have? Uh, there are options for this. So their, le their lease currently goes through 2026. So June 30th, 2026, but there were options to extend this particular one all the way out to 2036. Okay. And could you say again what took us from the 90,000 to the 65,000? They just paid, they paid the rent for the last year and the, the tenant proved an additional amount on top of okay. it. So 60, so where would that 65,000 have come from? Where, who the did pay? Come in. Who did pay? Originally, really who paid it was CFC. So CFC okay. paid it up front, uh, but during the closing as part of the credits and adjustments, uh, we did pay for that amount since CFC had already paid for it. So there was an additional um, 92, let me see, $92,468 that was part of the closing that came out of the bond to account for that revenue that we would potentially get in the future. It was, it's also offset, you know, it's offset by certain credits as well that we got for um, security deposits. And okay. like so to be clear, relative to the three that we approved last week, which was 30,000, 5,000, 9,000 actual dollars those tenants are going to receive from the city. Correct. This crew is not going to, they're going to receive zero money and we're saying the value of what we are not going to receive, that we're going to lose the value of 65,000, but they're not receiving any money from us. That's correct. So, so yeah, really, right. the, the way I think of this and, and is it's about the opportunity cost. So mm -hmm. what, what you're gaining in opportunity cost here, there's an opportunity cost of foregone rent and mm -hmm. the money for the build up. What you're gaining, though, is essentially 11,000 square feet of usable space mm -hmm. for city purposes uh, at $10.98 per square foot, which is a relative bargain uh, mm -hmm. in lease terms. In my experience, John may have a different experience. I, he, just also to note, um, John represents uh, FC Tucker, and we've been working with uh, Chris Cochran on this, who is contracted through FC Tucker, so he has agreed to recuse himself from these conversations and the voting on this particular matter. Um, questions for commissioners? I'm just wondering. We had discussed at the last meeting a way to have a record of what the foregone rent is, you know, what you've just discussed in terms of what the lease term end was, just because it's a way to account for what that opportunity cost is because there's multiple tenants that are being removed and there's income obviously being chosen, you know, to move in another direction in terms of the acquisition of Showers West. So my question is, it's not in the resolution, not in the exhibit, where is this information? Because we had agreed last time that it would be included in the meeting minutes. So my question is, for these two resolutions, is that going to be the same mode? Are there other ways that that record of those figures will be recorded? We could do we could do this a couple of different ways, uh, Commissioner Meyerson, which is one way is uh, we could record it in the minutes. Also, I'd be happy to just provide a one-page exhibit B to this resolution that reflects all of these that we add on to it. Just an addendum, it would say, here's the lease term, here's the rent amount, here's what the, here's what the credit is that we paid at closing, this is the amount that's been paid over the year, this is what is still remains due as of January 31st, 2024. And so that is the, the foregone, I can do that, that's, I'm happy to do that. Another way we can do it is um, if you want us to amend the resolution, I could do that on the spot. And so the resolution as amended would be just to add, uh, what we could do is just add a whereas clause uh, to just say uh, total tenant allowance as of January 31st, 2024 is X amount, so the $65,000, which is perfectly 
Thank you for those options. I'm just wondering if, you know, commissioners obviously will discuss the different options you mentioned. If we chose an Exhibit B, for example, is that something that could be comparably appended to all the resolutions of this, you know, both the ones that were approved at the last meeting as well as, you know, just, again, just kind of have parallel information sure. so yeah, that no, it's problem. mostly just the public transparency of how's the money being spent and what's being afforded on and having it on the record right and not right. having to look through the minutes for it. So just wondering in terms of having that consistency across similar resolutions that are terminating these leases just to have that information as that exhibit be, if it's in one, if we could have it in all. I, yes, and I think if you moved, I'm just trying to think of the mechanism to do that okay. in particular, just to make sure that that's on the I don't record. want to get hung up on it, but I thought I, that I know, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to, um, yes, is it possible? Yes, and we could figure out a way of doing that. So even if it's a contingency uh, approval of this resolution, what we would do is I put those together and just have them in your packet for next time so that, one, there's, it's clearly disseminated to everybody who gets the packet, and then we'll draw attention to it at your next meeting, which is Monday. Uh, we'll draw attention to it Monday, just saying, oh, these are the ones you already approved. Here's the exhibit Bs that you have gone back, and, and we will add to the file for, for these particular ones. Here's the approvals. To, get, to terminate the leases in the total amount of dollars that we're looking at giving up from a cost standpoint and from a lease loss standpoint, then that would be a cumulative total and the existing leases that we already have that we still, I think there's indicated <coughs> approximately seven that still needed to be dealt with. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you need to do that executive session or not. But, I, yeah. I think for <coughs> any remaining leases, I think that, that that's best held for okay. executive session because we do need to, so as you all know, and I mentioned this last time, the mayor, Mayor Thompson, has put together a working group specifically on Showers West and, and on what the future of Showers West looks like, and that's something that's happening currently. Uh, they, it has been a group that's been meeting uh, on Fridays to discuss those options. Uh, because there's an element of strategy and real property strategy there, I think that that is probably the best reserve for, for executive session in terms of what those additional remaining leases are, what the strategy would be, and what the options are for both the commission and, and from the administration's perspective about what they want to see. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Okay. And then the only other question I have to start to is GP, part, GP that we're looking to terminate and forgive the build out and basically essentially another 120000 a year in rent. Are they still going to be able to want and want to stay in downtown Bloomington? Because when we look at our overall employment aspect from our community as a whole, having those businesses centered in our community is always vital and important to have that. So, as we look at that, we want we want to be work with our tenants. We want to be able to work with our community employers. But as we look at changing these, how can we help them to want to relocate and stay in downtown Bloomington? And I can't tell you for sure, as I sit here, I don't want to be evasive no. about where they're moving, but I can tell you that no. that is a consideration that we have for all of these. Okay. Uh, there is an economic development angle of all of this as well, which right. is we do want to treat our employers well. We want to find quality places. And, and that, was, that was kind of the idea behind engaging a broker in the first place is if we know that people are going to be moving out of the building, we want to find them quality places within the, the immediate downtown and honestly even within the consolidated TIF and, and other areas right. if we can to, to keep the employment structure, to keep those good relationships and keep the, the economic development aspect of it vibrant while also having a property that we could potentially use. Utilize for the best benefit of the community. As exactly. Well. But yeah, exactly. So uh, I just want to say that that is a consideration and it, I can find out the details about okay. GP's Well, my main objective is as we come to, be, come to the individual companies and the owners and the people that are working there to give them a sense of continuity of community and how we work together because, you know, being a more mature, older individual here, you know, when Showers was originally done, it was a three tier that was set up between city government, private individuals, and Indiana University, or through, uh, yeah, yeah, Lloyd Alcott, yeah. the name is BFMC, or not BFMC, yeah, anyway, the third one, yeah, BFMC, that uh, indicated we had the university, all of us together, so as we change things somewhat because of time and age, that we are reach out to them in open arms and say we want to have good employers downtown to fill in our community. So. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. So this is just basically $65,000 gig right now. We lose the rent, but we're going, 
in order to ensure that we continue to move forward, there is a working group that is actively working to identify what we're going to do with this facility, whether it be police, fire, or some other. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And what the best options are for each. Do we have a time frame? Or is that... So, well, Monday, so you'll be hearing about the bids, because that's the next kind of trigger point. So, the, as and this is getting a far field, a little bit of the resolution, so just if you'll grant me the indulgence of speaking slightly off topic, okay. I appreciate it. Um, the, we received bids for showers west a full renovation as it was current as it was designed last year um, on December 11th uh, you all considered that December 18th and voted to postpone consideration of those bids until your first meeting in February which is Monday uh, you have under Indian law for uh, uh, public work um, bidding process you have 60 days to award the bids um, you have options, of course. You don't necessarily, if you want to award the bid as it was stated, then you have to do it within those 60 days. Then if you, do, if you fail to do it within those 60 days, it becomes the contractor's option of whether they extend their pricing longer than that. Uh, or you have the option of rejecting all of the bids. So what we anticipate is bringing to you Monday a recommendation on action towards those bids because that 60 days from December 11th will expire between your first and second meeting in February. So really this first meeting in February is where that action needs to occur. And just to be clear, the efforts of the working group on Showers West will inform you of those recommendations. Right? That is correct. Okay. I, I do not plan on going rogue and making my own recommendations. Don't, <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> Sue or John, do you have comments to this resolution, 2413? No, I appreciate the additional information. Like Larry said, I'm going to recuse myself from voting, so. I'd like to propose um, an amendment to the resolution that would add that Exhibit B, as Mr. Allen suggested. I, I mean, he proposed different options. If commissioners want to discuss the other options, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts, but I'm proposing an amendment that would add Exhibit B, as he described in his earlier outline. I'll second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, and recuse. That's on the amendment, right? That was on the amendment, so now we vote on the resolution as amended. So, uh, could I have a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 24 13, as described. As amended. As amended, thank you. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And one recuse. Uh, thank you. We'll now turn to resolution 2415, lease modification for early termination, <clears throat> Bloomington Symphony Orchestra. Any staff want to speak to this resolution? So I'll speak to this again. So this came up, uh, this was unfortunately, uh, we received the documentation to this too late to include in your last meeting. Uh, and since we were gonna already have this special meeting, we thought we'd just pair this together. Uh, understanding that this would be subject to the same Exhibit B, so that that would be added to this as well. Um, this is to terminate the lease of um, the Bloomington Symphony Orchestra, uh, which has um, a relatively small footprint uh, in the office. Let me pull it up here. <coughs> Yeah, so Bloomington Symphony Orchestra, they, they rent 637 square feet uh, in Showers West. Their annual rent is $7,580. Their lease goes through until January 31st of 2025. Um, as per the other um, recommendations, Bloomington Symphony Orchestra as part of the termination uh, requested assistance on helping them move and find a different location. Uh, we have used our resources, I think, to find them a suitable location. The other thing is how do we cover the cost of Bloomington Symphony Orchestra? This is one of our nonprofits in the downtown, so the, the settlement agreement here is to give them $10,000 that would cover the cost of hiring a moving company, being able to pack up their entire office and move it to the next location. Uh, I will also mention that in this particular case where Bloomington Symphony Orchestra is located within the building, it is part of the fire administration uh, design footprint, which is still very much on the table to utilize. 
uh, almost immediately there is a, a continuing need to get fire administration in a location. They are currently in your College Square property, as you may realize or may understand, I know you all do, uh, in, in the, the, what was the former Bunger Robertson Law Offices. Uh, and so one of the th goals of the Showers West project was to find um, a suitable replacement for the offices that for fire administration, which includes fire inspection, mobile health, integrated health, et cetera. And one of the benefits of this particular part of the building is that uh, the upstairs and the downstairs are very well finished and apportioned as office spaces already. And so they're almost nearly move in ready uh, with some updates, some fairly minor updates. So this is one of the easier ways, and so this clears a path of making it a little bit easier to potentially just move fire administration in, even with a smaller reduced uh, um, necessity for significant upgrades to certain parts of the building. So it doesn't have the same kind of uh, detailed security measures that police needed, and things like that. Thank you, Larry. Um, it was pointed out I made a mistake as leader of the meeting today and didn't have asked for public comment on the last resolution having to do with GP strategy. So to correct my mistake, are there any public comments on GP strategies and termination? Online or in the person? Yeah, I, I think I'm the only one. And I, do, I do appreciate you passing the resolution. My name's Aaron West. I'm the director of, of the office here and uh, senior director of our North American business. And to echo what was stated, we, we've been here in one shape or another for the last 20 years. At one point in time, having probably over 100 resources sitting in the, in the <coughs> space up here in a couple different suites, um, and it was important for us to try to argue with our management team as we expanded to maintain a footprint here, and that's what we're currently doing is making sure that we still have a footprint in Bloomington, so we have um, that underway, and hopefully we'll actually sign the paperwork tomorrow to start moving into another location. Excellent. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank well, you. My apologies for neglecting you in the first place. Okay. But thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Zoom or in person? Okay. Thank you. Uh, back to resolution 2415. Larry, thank you for the explanation and Larry, questions. What was the annual rent for <coughs> company? Uh, $7,580.64. Did you say $70,000? $7,000. Thank you. Okay. I may have said seventy. dollars <laughs> Okay. I was like... Yeah, I'm a BSO fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nine thousand dollars per square foot. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. uh, questions from commissioners? Yeah, just want to make comments? sure. Yeah. Make sure the BSO we stay they stay operational and continue and with the missions that they've set for. And if nobody goes to see them, you should. That's very good. So I'll make a resolution to well, approve. We have to have public comments. Public comment. Thank you. Uh, public comments. Hi, um, I'm Donna Lafferty. This is I'm Alexis Witt. We're with the BSO. I'm the executive director. She's our board president. We've been very stressed out, and I spoke to you on the phone the other day about this because we've kind of been ready to go for a long time, and our, everything's packed up. Our office is unusable mm -hmm. over there, and we're really hoping this was going to get resolved today. So we're very grateful. Mm -hmm that this is done. We've got a new space. The movers are coming on Friday morning as long as you guys sign off on this. And thank you for that endorsement. And yes, and yes, thank you. Please, come. Uh, come uh, to our house. Come March 3rd. Yes, yeah. March 3rd. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we're staying close. Mm -hmm. Our new location is going to be just right behind the old hospital building. So mm -hmm. we, we want to stay right where the we are. The Hopewell area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. 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 Uh, other public comments? Or on Zoom? Uh, seeing none, does, do we have a motion from the commissioners? I'll make a motion to approve the recommendation as, pr as proposed. Second. D uh, this is probably not the way to say it, but does anyone want to add But we want Exhibit B? I thought Mr. Allen said that that, that would just be now. I, I, you know, it's good to That's clarify that. that. Okay. okay. So you. we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, four ayes and one recusal. So, um, with those, can we go back to the new point of the claims for February 2nd, 2024, for the total of... It has listed in the end and in your um, inbox, and the one you questioned was actually a bond payment. Great. So, um, I had asked Anna uh, in specific about... 
page three, item number uh, 7255, $1,485,000 um, to Bloomington TIRB 20, 2015, etc. And you said that's for? It's for a bond payment. I also um, asked and received a copy of the invoice from the controller's <coughs> office and emailed it to you guys as well. So it's for the residential TIF, I believe. Yeah, so for this, well, not residential, yeah. so this, this particular tip, bond payment is for the consolidated TIF. Consolidated okay. uh, yeah. TIF. We haven't got a residential yeah, yet. Sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. That I'm aware of. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, do you have any? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my question, but other questions, commissioners have no, questions I appreciate, about it. appreciate the clarification. Mm -hmm. Deborah, Randy? No, thank you. We're I good. appreciate that. John? Anything over the six zeros? <laughs> Uh, you might want to ask. Yeah, I want to ask the question. I, okay. I don't blame you. Okay. Um, if there are any uh, no more comments or questions from commissioners, could I have a motion, please? I move approval for uh, for payment. Do we take public comment on claims? Do we take public comment on claims? Not typically. I don't believe okay. so. I have a motion from John West. And a second from yeah. Mr. Cassidy. Second. Oh, from Randy. Yeah. Um, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All in favor, unanimous. Is there any other business or general discussion? One thing, because I just want to let everybody know that Anna is doing a phenomenal job taking into consideration all the things that have just been put on her in regards to all the redevelopment aspects of Hopewell, the other historic things, and the amount of work that she is having to take on is phenomenal. She's doing a great job. They're here. Um, seeing no other business, could I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. So moved. Thank you. Thanks. See you all Monday. Thank you all, all right, staff, Monday. for getting us all together. Yeah. Thank you so much.